Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson, and today we're going to try to figure out if we can use the temperature of the tank to help control or even possibly get rid of dinoflagellates. In this video, we're going to talk a lot about dinoflagellates in tank temperature. So to begin with, dinoflagellates are quite simply one of the worst algae you can get in your reef tank. It looks like cyanobacteria, but green. It's just this green slime algae that gets bubbly. It'll cover your rocks, it'll smother your coral, and once it's in your tank, sometimes it's almost impossible to get rid of. I first started dealing with dinoflagellates in the big tank, the 210. But even before it was the 210 and it was the 90 gallon, I'd see little patches of it peek its little head out, maybe it'd kind of grow onto a rock a little bit, and then it would disappear. So I never really had to worry about dino. And in my own personal experience at the time, it just wasn't a big deal. It's one of those things you would see, and then it would go away. So when it first showed its head in the 24 gallon, I really wasn't that worried about it. Every time I'd seen it before, it would show up, grow a little, and then go away. But that's not what happened in the 24 gallon. It would rear its head, it would take over everything, I would suck it out of the tank with a water change, and within a few days, it would all be back. And given enough time, it would take over the rock work. It was absolutely terrible. One of the big reasons that people give that you might get dinoflagellates in your tank is nutrient-based, and it's not what you think. It's not that your nitrates or phosphates are too high, it's that they're too low. The theory is, is that with those super low nitrates, the dino can outcompete everything else. But in this tank, in my experience, it made no difference. If I did a water change, I could suck the dino out. If I didn't do a water change, it exploded all over the tank. If the nitrates were low, I got a lot of dino. If the nitrates were high, I got a lot of dino. It made no difference in this particular tank. And I fought this problem for about two years. When I finally decided I should break down and try a different method to fix this problem. The first thing I tried was dosing Microbacter 7. This is a bottle basically full of bacteria. The idea is you dose it into your tank, it helps stabilize the bacterial colonies, it gives a lot of biodiversity, and hopefully that bacteria can help outcompete the dinoflagellates in the tank. So that's what I did. The thing is, is bacterial cures are pretty slow to work in a tank, and they're not really known to give the best results. So we can debate all day long as to what the best bacterial cure is, but I ended up seeing an article on Reef Builders that talked about fixing dino with tank temperatures. So since I was way more worried about fixing the dino problem in this tank, then figuring out what the science is behind the bacteria and temperature changes, I went ahead and started messing with temperature. Let's take a minute and talk about the Reef Builders article that changed my thinking on dinoflagellates. It's called, Is This the Dinoflagellate Treatment We've All Been Hoping For? by Mark Vanderwall. Basically, Mark was struggling with dinoflagellates. He ran across a YouTube video where the guy in the YouTube video, and I have forgotten his name, I apologize, was treating dinoflagellates with higher tank temperatures, 83 degrees high, which is way hotter than most of us probably want to run our reef tank. But we'll talk more about temperature in a minute. But Mark was struggling with the dyno problem in his tank. He probably felt like he'd already tried everything. So he tried this method and had great success. So when I saw it, I was intrigued. So I posted a Facebook post on the Reef Builders post, right? A little comment thing down there. I'm not a social media guy. I know, right? I do a YouTube channel. I'm not a social media guy. Go figure. Anyways, a lot of people commented to me about tank temperatures. 
But as far as I had ever been concerned, 82 was my max. I had heard that natural reef bleaching can happen as low as 82 degrees. As far as I was concerned, if it can happen in the wild as low as 82 degrees, I wasn't going to go near 82 degrees. But when I tried to find where I'd gotten that information from, I couldn't. And of course, when I started asking other reefers about high tank temperatures, they'd actually had really good luck. It's not really that uncommon for people in warmer parts of the world to run higher reef temperatures out of necessity. The other benefit I was hearing from a lot of people is faster coral growth, which I have actually heard myself before. In fact, I have friends who have had reef tanks push 90 degrees and be completely fine. To be clear in this video, I am not recommending anybody run a tank anywhere near 90 degrees, but they had the right coral, it was adapted, so it worked. But I'm not recommending it. With my fears relieved, I decided to try running higher temperatures in this tank. Now, the article and the YouTube video really suggested 83 degrees to get rid of dinoflagellates. But I had a problem. My thermostat only goes between 82 and 84 degrees. There is no 82 degree option. I set it at 84 and the tank heated up to about 81 and a half degrees. That was about the best I could get out of it. Reason being, well, I've had heaters fail in the past, they failed on, so I bought the smallest possible heater for this tank, and honestly, I just don't think it's powerful enough to heat up to get the tank to that temperature, which I'm kind of okay with at this point. I'd rather have the dyno in the tank than a dead tank. Up until this point, I was running this tank about 78 degrees. Raising it to 81 and a half meant that the dyno growth went from explosive covering the rocks in a few days to, well, three weeks in this dirty tank. The tank is dirty, so I can film it and show you what three weeks of dyno looks like. Yeah, it's still there, but it grows slowly and right now is worse than it probably should be. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But this is a solid result. I was able to massively slow down the dyno growth by raising the temperature. To be clear, the Microbacter 7 could be having some effect here. I really have no way of differentiating those two because, well, this isn't science. This is just me playing it with my reef tank. But I'm really blown away by the results. So this is about four months in. So we've had Microbacter 7 and we've been running the tank temperature about 81 and a half degrees, except for the last week. So what's happened over the last week? Well, hell has manifested itself on earth. It has been insane. The last part of August was extremely hot. The majority of the days were 90s into the hundreds. And I mean, just extremely hot all the time. Colorado has gone into a massive drought. Our beautiful Colorado Rockies are on fire, something I've never seen in my 38 years of life. It's been insane. And in the midst of all this, well, my AC decided it was going to freeze up and give it up for the year. Now, it's not that big of a deal. I'll get it fixed in the spring. But for now, I'm having to deal with the tank temperatures without the AC. So I've lowered the temperature on this tank just so I don't overheat it. And the temperatures have been crazy lately. So this tank has been getting big swings. The lows have been about 78 and the highs have been about 85. This isn't something I recommend, but we're only doing it for a few days. And this happened over the weekend while I wasn't home to watch it. And as you can see, things are pretty good, all things considered. The big tank, well, it went to almost 85 degrees as well. Halides are off, T5s are off. I just wasn't able to be home to take care of it. I lost one large Monte Cora Pora colony in the frag tank and that was it. Everything else looks fine. But hopefully we're getting relief. 
in a very extreme opposite direction. Yesterday, temperatures were 99 degrees. Today, they're supposed to be in the 90s. Tomorrow, a high of 37 in snow. Go figure. I am hoping this takes care of our fires, takes care of the smoke, takes care of the ash, and gets me to a point where I can stabilize the temperatures in my reef tank. Based on my experience, I think this is worth a shot. I really do think you can start to control your dyno just by raising the tank temperatures. Now in the reef builders article, the guy who did the initial video talked about 83 degrees. For very practical reasons, I wasn't able to tank my tank temp that high. But if you out there in YouTube land have tried to defeat dyno by running your tank at 82, 83 degrees, or even higher, what have your experiences been? Are they similar to mine? Did you beat it completely? I wanna know, and I bet you there's thousands of people watching this video that also wanna know. So like, comment, subscribe, and let's figure this out together.